Hey guys, welcome to Kara's Corner. It's Motivation Monday. And now that we have wrapped up our segment of finding your purpose, we are going to delve into the three ways to figure out what you're great at and how to leverage it more powerfully. So this article comes from Kathy Caprino, and this is part of her series, Building Your Happiest and Best Career. So um, one of the first questions that she starts off with is, why do so many people fail to recognize the talents that they have? One of them is because what comes easily to us doesn't really seem remarkable. This is something that I've struggled with, like, oh, I don't know how much I would charge them because it really is not going to take me that long. It doesn't matter. Just because it doesn't take me long and it's quality doesn't mean that it's not worth anything. The fact that they can't do it and they came to me should let me know enough to recognize my worth and to add tax. So... Some people believe that the work they do now is so joyful because it taps into what they naturally do or naturally love to do and that they're good at. So for me, that's like cooking, babysitting, uh, writing. So I used to write a lot of papers for people. Um, I kind of dabble in a lot of different things because I'm multifaceted. So um, these talents should be what we're leveraging for a happier, more financially and emotionally rewarding career. And we have to capitalize on that. If it's something that we're good at and we're passionate about, that's what we need to be doing career-wise. So uh, what are the different things that you can do about it? So take some time to reflect about all the things that you think you're good at. And um, make a list of every job that you've ever had. Now... Once you break down the job that you have, break down the skills that you used in that certain job. And um, so for me, I did this exercise and I used to work at the movie theater. So I was good at cleaning and organizing spaces, ensuring that the building was visually appealing, handling funds, um, selling merchandise, upselling orders, uh, negotiating, advising. Uh, I've been a secretary before, so I was great at filing, scanning, organizing documents, keeping information confidential, managing and processing time-sensitive information, faxing, scheduling meetings, taking calls. As a resident advisor, I was a great mediator, um, implemented rules, safety inspector, um, engagement coordinator, relationship builder. And um, as that advisor, I served as a liaison between, or I'm sorry, a liaison between the housing and residence life staff and the students. And I'm also an advisor at work. So I'm the liaison between my colleagues and our supervisors. So I aid in identifying areas of growth and improvement, having those difficult conversations. Um, so these things require that I'm attentive, that I manage time well which I'm working on in that aspect, that I'm great with managing money, that I have great communication skills, um, also having great organizational skills, which is another thing that I'm working on being more organized, because right now I'm organized, but it could be a little chaotic, but I know where everything is, but I wanna get it even more organized so that I eliminate the stress that I have from not being as organized. Um, also, with the roles that I've had, it plays into having listening skills, pro uh, product management, research analysis, building client relationships, management, conflict resolution. So as you can see, I've had several different roles that have required several different things from me. I won't read the whole list. Um, so you have to have a measurable positive impact that you've made in the jobs that you love the most. So as you write down what jobs you've had, what skills you've used, also think about the jobs that you love the most and what you can take from that to project you to the next part of your, your the next stage of your life. Uh, one of our second points is that your jobs have gone badly and they have tainted your perspective. So I'm pretty sure everybody's had an experience where they did not enjoy their job. Um, so people fail to identify and leverage their most joyful and valuable talents and abilities um, because their confidence has been crushed by jobs that went poorly. Y'all, if it does not work for you, it's just not your season. That doesn't mean that everything isn't going to work for you. It just means that that's not right for you and you need to deliver yourself from that negative environment. 
So um, some people may experience having a toxic boss, they may have failed at a key aspect of their job, or it was just the wrong fit from the beginning and they stayed too long and got hurt. I've also experienced that. Um, traumatizing work experiences leave people shattered at times, insecure, lacking the ability to see themselves clearly or to recognize their valuable worth or their skills and talents that they possess. Um, they let one experience wash away all their confidence and their clear thinking about who they really are and what they're capable of. Nobody can tell you what you are if you are secure in knowing who you are. So if it's a job that doesn't go well, don't let that hinder you from growth because that's just another learning opportunity for you. So go back in time, identify all the good that happened to you on this job to kind of stop stressing about everything that didn't go right. If you think positively, positively, you're gonna breed positivity. So think about what you did accomplish that was positive, the great relationships that you've built and positive innovations or outcomes you've created and participated in. The difference that you made as a leader, uh, the differences that you made as a leader or a manager, even though the end result wasn't what you hoped for. One of her final points is um, you've never held a job you liked and you think that the problem is you. It just means that you haven't found your passion yet, so you have to keep working at it and don't give up so you don't end up settling for something that's not what you deserve. We all deserve the best in life. Um, so this leads some people to question everything about themselves and doubt that they have any talent or skill at all. So why does this happen? Um, Kathy says that uh, they've pursued the wrong career direction. And in some cases, they may have been pushed to studying in school and universities and fields that they didn't enjoy, but they felt like they had to. So it could have been a family member that was pushing them to do something that they didn't really feel like they wanted to do. Um, it could have just been trying to hold up to societal expectations. It could be, the options are endless of what it could have been. So um, these people could in fact actually be meant to, actually um, be meant to be entrepreneurs, um, innovators or business founders, but have attempted to do stuff themselves in a corporate box and they end up feeling terrible. Don't put yourself in a box. And the worst that anybody can ever tell you is no. So don't already tell yourself the no before you hear it. Let them tell you no. Because sometimes we, it is apparent that there are a lot of people who have jobs that they don't deserve, but because they went after it. So sometimes I'll apply for jobs knowing I'm not qualified, but I'm like, look, what is for me is for me. So the worst they can tell me is no. So what I want you all to think about, um, I have eight questions for you or Kathy had eight questions for us. What exactly have you disliked about your job? Was your unhappiness in these jobs related to the culture, leadership, or management? Or was it about the fit of the role of the skills and the interests that you have? Why did you stay in a job that you hated? Um, before you experienced those negative interactions, what was clear about the skills and talents that you did have or that you do have? Uh, what did it feel like when you used those talents that you enjoy? where might you be able to apply these skills in a more rewarding experience so that comes with researching and finding what's right for you instead of just doing something because it's what you're supposed to do um, what types of organizations fields and areas truly interest you so where do you want to make a difference so for me i do a lot of mentoring i'm active with my sorority um, and then i just have a lot of projects that i do on my own as well um, what is the legacy that you'd like to leave behind when you die? Um, what do you want to have said, done, or contributed to leave your mark? And the last question, how can you get on a path and what different actions can you take to building that legacy now? So I don't know about y'all, but if I do have kids, I'm trying to leave behind generational wealth. I want to leave behind knowledge for my family. I want to be able to create a life for them that they can follow a path that I set instead of being swindled into the ways of the world. So I hope you guys stay motivated and have a wonderful day.